Now, I did a video a little while back talking about the WWE adding a cruiserweight division to Raw being a stupid idea. And I laid out my case as to why. Not surprisingly, the response to that particular video was not all that positive, And I don't really care. Because it's one of these things that I said what I said for a reason. And I knew I would ultimately be right. I don't do it for a popularity contest. You know, sometimes the things that need to be said are the ones that the people disagree with the most. And sometimes I look at some of the things I say, and when it comes to a wrestling perspective, I say the more people that disagree with me, the closer to the truth I actually probably am. But one of the big concerns I had about the WWE adding a cruiserweight division on Raw is, first and foremost, the history of the company you know, not really knowing to do with these type of guys. Then you look at it and you say a lot of the top guys main event scene in WWE today, they look like cruiserweights, they act like cruiserweights, they work like cruiserweights, and they're fr frankly packaged and presented like cruiserweights. So why would you create an entire division that in many ways resembles your main event scene? Now you're kind of confusing the audience and knowing the WWE's history, especially on the Raw brand in particular, they were not going to be very invested in the Cruiserweight division succeeding. They were not going to do the things necessary to make that division work. I always felt it was a more natural fit on SmackDown to begin with, just based kind of off of the history of the show, the way that particular show is presented. You know, the way it used to be for many years when you had the old brand split was Raw was more of the sports entertainment and SmackDown was more of the pure wrestling type of show. And in some ways, that probably still bears out to be true. But the last thing you needed to do was add more random, pointless filler wrestling to a three-hour Raw that has plenty of that in abundance every single week. So what happens? You put the belt on the wrong guy to begin with with TJ Perkins. You do all this other stupid shit. And now, basically, the cruiserweights have become the piss break on Raw. And, that, and that's what it is. Now, there seems to be this misconception that I don't like the smaller guys at all. That, to me, in order for you to be a big star, you have to be a big, huge dude. And that couldn't be further from the truth. That is completely and totally ridiculous. It just is. It's just not based on any semblance of fact whatsoever. As far as I know, I've always been a pretty big fan of AJ Styles. I wouldn't exactly call Jeff Hardy a monster, but for years I was a pretty big supporter of Jeff Hardy. You know, going years and years back, I always had an appreciation for Shawn Michaels in ring work. You know, and I could go through other guys on the list over the years. You know, Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit before they all got gassed up 40 pounds too big. You know, Rey Mysterio. And I could go on and on and on. Chris Jericho was never a big dude, was he? I mean, so there's a lot of people over the years that I enjoyed their work and were, was a fan of that didn't have to be the Hulk Hogan type of monster or giant. And no matter how many times I say it, some, for some reason this shit doesn't sink through to people. It's not about the fact that people are small. It's the fact that everybody ends up being the same. It's the same thing I would say if everybody was a 300-pound roided up monster. There has to be variety. There has to be difference. Now, maybe granted, the biggest stars in the history of the business have been bigger guys, and that is true. And I still think, ultimately, at the end of the day, that's where the most money is potentially to be made in those bigger individuals, the larger-than-life folks. But there is definitely a place to make money and potentially a lot of money with some of the smaller, quicker, more athletic type of in-ring performers. They have a place. They have a very important place. And you can make money with them. And if you're a good wrestling company and you're not the WWE, you could potentially make a lot of money with them. So when I saw that the WWE was launching this 205 Live Cruiserweight special on the WWE Network, I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe here's a chance for the WWE to sit there and rectify some wrongs with the Cruiserweight division. Maybe this is a place where they can experiment. Maybe this is a place where they can try some different things. They can kind of figure out what they have in mind for the Cruiserweight division. And, you know, you look at it, it's just more 
45 minutes of pointless filler random match crap. That's basically what it is. It's just another filler on the WWE Network. And, and my thought process initially was that maybe doing this 205 Live show, you're going to have Triple H in charge of it, and or maybe you'd be tasking somebody like Jamie Noble with producing the show, with being in charge of the show, with the thought process being maybe him or Jimmy Jacobs, you know, Triple H, whoever it may be, that maybe they would actually have an understanding of what it's like to actually be an in-ring performer, or especially if it was a former cruiserweight type of guy like a Jamie Noble, they would actually know what it's like to be in that spot. They would actually know what it's like to be that type of performer. But apparently I was mistaken. Through some of my readings on the interwebs today, I see that the people in charge of 205 Live and the people overseeing the Cruiserweight division are none other than Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn. That's right, the 70-plus-year-old billionaire owner of the company who still is gassing to the nth power, tearing quads, going out of style, when Kevin Nash says, you got to take it easy. And Kevin Dunn, Mr. Bugs Bunny, him fucking self. Just picture Kevin Dunn in the back, in the gorilla position, or wherever the fuck he is in the production truck, eating a big bowl of green giant carrots, saying, That's not how we do cruiserweight sports entertainment in the WWE. Oh my god. When I think of the cruiserweights, and what the cruiserweight division is supposed to be, in the way you want to package and present and feature cruiserweights and said cruiserweight division, the absolute last two people on the entire planet that I would want overseeing it and being involved in it are Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn. Now, for some of the reasons that the cruiserweight division has ultimately uh, been a piece of crap on Raw, one of the major problems is, is that it was a part of what I alluded to in terms of why have the cruiserweight division when many of the top guys already do cruiserweight crap, it's a valid point. But for a lot of these cruiserweights, because they didn't have the size, and frankly a lot of them have the personality of paint drying, and don't have that natural ability to get over in other ways, the only way they have to get over is to do all types of crazy, off-the-wall, fast-paced shit. That's what helped them make a name for themselves on the independent scene. That's ultimately what got them the shot with the WWE to begin with. So why in the hell now, when you've got them actually at the dance, would you want to make them a slow, ground-and-pound type of division? That makes absolutely no sense. It, it just makes no sense. And if anything, it almost seems like Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn are intentionally trying to put the screws to these guys and sabotage these guys. If you're going to employ these people... If you're going to have a division, then why not do what you can to make some money off of it? That's my thought process. If I have cruiserweights just like anybody else on the roster, I'm looking at anybody and trying to figure out a way to potentially draw money with them. And in my opinion, that is the right and only perspective to have in the professional wrestling business. I don't care if you're Hornswoggle or Great Khali. If I've signed you, I've signed you for a reason. Let's try and figure out a way to make money with you. And either we do or we don't. But the last thing I'm going to do, if I've got cruiserweights, is expect them to wrestle some old, technical, slow-plotting type of style that runs antithesis to everything that they are about that actually got them established, that helped them make a name, and got them to the big dance. This is like in basketball. Let's say you get Steph Curry. And we know Steph Curry is the best shooter in the NBA He's a top five player in the league. He's a big time scorer. When he gets hot, he's unstoppable, blah, blah, blah. But let's say a new coach comes in or he signs with a new team. And instead of allowing Steph Curry to be Steph Curry, they now want him to be more of a pure point guard. And they want him to focus on on the ball defense and all of this other bullshit that is counterculture to what actually got Steph Curry to be who Steph Curry was. You want Steph Curry to be Steph Curry. You don't want Steph Curry to be a Ricky Rubio 
or Rajon Rondo. You want to put people in positions to succeed. And you have to accentuate their strengths and hide their negatives. What Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn are doing with these cruiserweights is ludicrous. Talking about implementing their vision. What vision is that? Trying to ensure once and for all that a cruiserweight division will never work on any WWE programming? What's the vision here? To make the most boring fucking wrestling possible? You know, this this can't even be a bash piece on the cruiserweights or the performers in the cruiserweights or the concept of the cruiserweight division. Because again, like I said, if you're going to have it, try to do something positive with it. Try to, God forbid, in the professional wrestling business, make some fucking money off of it. There is no vision here. If there is a vision, the only vision is, apparently, to intentionally sabotage these guys. I mean, for Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn, what makes you think telling them to stop all the high spots is a good idea? What makes you think asking them to wrestle a slow, plodding, 1940 style of technical wrestling is going to get them over? What makes you think featuring them only pretty much in random matches on Raw and never getting anybody engaged or interested in any of the characters is going to get any of these guys freaking over and in any way, shape, or form, along with those other things, means that the Cruiserweight division has any shot in hell of succeeding. The last two people that need to be running anything involving the Cruiserweight division are Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn. You almost want to say when it comes to the Cruiserweights, you hope to hide that portion of the weekly script from Vince and Kevin Dunn, so that way they can't stick their steroid-infested Bugs Bunny fucking teeth into it and chop it all up and fucking ruin it to bits. I mean, for crying out loud, you take guys that can do lots of athletic and crazy things, and you tell them they can't do any of that. No wonder nobody can get over in this fucking company because of bullshit like this. Imagine taking Rey Mysterio and wanting them to wrestle like John Cena or The Big Show. That's fucking dumb. Imagine asking The Big Show to wrestle like somebody like a Finn Balor. It might be comedy to see, but it'd be physically impossible, and furthermore, it'd be counterproductive. You don't want to take the 400-plus pound 7-foot giant and make him feel like he's 5'10", 190 pounds. That's not who he is. That's not what it's about. It cannot be that hard to make the cruiserweights interesting. I've talked about some of the challenges. Frankly, many of the performers I couldn't give a shit about regardless of what the company was doing with them. They're just not that good. Flat out. Now, you've got somebody like a Brian Kendrick who knows what the hell he's doing, and even with the slower kind of ground-and-pound technical type of style, he can still make it work, but again, that's because Brian Kedrick knows what the hell he's fucking doing. He has the ability, as a worker, to wrestle all different types of styles. So what makes him such a valuable commodity, and that's why that cruiserweight division has to be built around him, and should be built around him, and needs to be built around him. But to sit there and do what they're doing here, it's just obscene. And it's just a colossal waste of everybody's fucking time and energy. And I feel bad for the people that actually fucking bought into this delusion that the cruiserweights on Raw were going to be any fucking good. Because clearly you see now, that it's like they were literally brought in to sabotage them. Which again, really makes no sense in the grand scheme of things, because so many of the things the Cruiserweight division was supposed to do is what the main event scene actually does now. If you flip-flop it and the Cruiserweights do what the Cruiserweights are supposed to do and the main event does what the main event is supposed to do, then maybe people would actually get over the right way and maybe the company would make some more goddamn money and wouldn't continue to hemorrhage viewers. It's just a thought. It's just so disappointing when you see Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn are overseeing everything involving the cruiserweight division, it's not hard to figure out why the cruiserweights being on WWE programming has been flat out a complete fucking flop.